Hey, I'm going to show you how to make a semi-programmable robot in less than five minutes. When I say programmable, I mean either spin in a circle or drive straight forward. Here's an overview of the parts and tools you'll need. You'll need a wooden dowel to be the axle of your robot. You'll need two wheels. The holes in the wheel should be relatively close to the size of the shaft of your motor. You'll also need two motors. Here I'm using two 6 volt DC motors. You'll need two wires to connect those motors that are stripped on both ends. You'll also need a couple of rubber bands, a battery to power your robot, some electrical tape and scissors to cut the tape, and a couple of spare wires. Here I'm using two breadboard jumper cables to be the leads off of my battery and I'm using two wires with alligator clips on either end to make the connections. If you prefer to solder, please do so, but I use these materials so that this project could be done without soldering. So let's get started. We'll start by rubber banding the battery to the wooden dowel. Next we'll feed these two wires through the rubber band to keep them close to the wooden dowel. Now we'll rubber band each motor to the end of the wooden dowel. Hot glue, tape, or other adhesive might be a better method to do this, but rubber bands work just fine for a quick operation. Each lead coming off the back of the motor has a hole in it. We're going to insert the wire into these holes in order to hold them in place. This way we don't have to solder anything. Most DC motors will have these holes. If not, you might have to solder or use another method to attach your wires to these leads. For now, it doesn't matter which wire goes to which lead. We'll be able to tell the robot what we want it to do by adjusting which wire goes to which lead later. Once you've attached the wires to one motor, go ahead and do the same thing for the other motor. Again, it doesn't matter which lead you attach which wire to. Now we'll prep the motor shafts for the wheels. If your wheels fit perfectly on your motor shafts, great. If not, go ahead and put a little bit of tape around the motor shaft so that you can get a snug fit with your wheel. Now we can attach the wheels to make this guy start looking more like a robot. Sometimes it helps to snip off the excess tape that you put onto the motor shaft. Also, you might need to remove a little bit if the wheel doesn't fit on quite right. Make sure you need to apply a decent amount of pressure to get the wheel on to keep it from falling off. Now I'm going to make sure my battery leads are accessible by using these breadboard jumper cables and plugging them into the positive and negative on my battery so I can use my alligator clips to power my motors. Now all I need to do is attach one alligator clip to the positive lead on my battery and one to the negative, and then clip one to the positive on my motor and one to the negative on my motor. It doesn't matter which one I clip to the positive and which one to the negative. Switching them will just cause the robot to move in the opposite direction. Now in order to program the robot to drive straight forward, all you have to do is switch the leads on one of the motors. Switching back and forth will cause the robot to either drive straight forward or spin in a circle. Thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video.